Okay, so welcome back. So we have just seen what are the uses or applications of the uh, PowerPoint application. So now we will see how to start with the presentation, how to open a new uh, PowerPoint presentation and how to go about it. Okay. So I'm sharing my entire screen. So generally, as in any system, you have to go to the start button or the Windows button and we type in PowerPoint and we click on it. Right. So this will be your opening page for the PowerPoint, any PowerPoint presentation. Right. So this will be the opening. So once you open, uh, this is the very la uh, latest version. But however it is, you will have these basic uh, tools are going to be the same, right? So you will have home where you can start with a new, completely new presentation. You can have a blank presentation where you can work on from scratch or you can open a presentation which you have already worked on, right? And the next one is going to be the templates that are available, okay? So there are n number of themes and uh, templates that will be available. So if I go on these more themes, you can see uh, there are a lot of uh, templates that are available as such with this Microsoft Office itself. Also, you will be able to get few uh, themes and templates right from online also. And like in the previous uh, presentation, I told you uh, on slides go that again is a good website from where you can get very good uh, templates. So what do you mean by these themes or templates that also we will see, right? The designs, design of the background, the font colors that are going to go about with that, you know, whichever goes in matching with the theme. So all that is important. So that can be taken from these themes and templates. And in the beginning itself, you also have few tools that can be uh, taken. So how a presentation can, uh, you know, here one of this is welcome to PowerPoint where you have basics of PowerPoint is explained in this template itself. And also there is bring your presentations to life into 3D. We'll be seeing uh, later on how to add in 3D objects and you can rotate these objects. When, you, when I say it is three dimensional, I can rotate and I can show you it in all different views, right? So all these basic tools are also available or we go in for a blank presentation when you want to start with just the basic plain white background, right? So I'm opening a blank. We'll start with scratch from scratch, right? So here um, we need to get to know, right? So in school, when you have studied basics of computers, basic of applications and softwares, we would have gone through all these uh, menu bars, status bars, task bar, right? And also when you have uh, learned AutoCAD, again, we have these drawing tools, modification tools, right? All that are grouped together and formed into different uh, bars, right? So we have these menu bars where you have this home, insert, draw, design. And so under home or under insert, corresponding to that, whatever options are available, all that is grouped into and you can see it in those uh, bars, right? And uh, the one which is on the top most, where you see this presentation or whatever uh, file name that you're going to give, right? So on the topmost, what you see the first line that is called as the title bar, okay? And generally we have these uh, standard toolbars in that now it is a little modified of what we would have uh, uh, learned even just few years back in school also. So you can have these different menus, different options that are available okay and when you come for uh, the powerpoint at the bottom you have these notes sections where i can click on the notes so while seeing the applications i was telling you that this powerpoint presentation is just an additional tool for you to effectively communicate use you during any presentation so one of the thing is it is not going to be monotonous when you just keep showing your face and just talk orally completely so we have these presentations and even you know you're all already going to have some keywords which will be useful for you to make up the uh, sentences and talk and additionally you can create these notes at the bottom so whenever required 
you can uh, just look into it okay and then talk with these notes so whatever ha you have on these note pin obviously it is not going to be seen by the audience so it will be visible only to the presenter right so if you are going to operate the uh, uh, laptop or phone and you're going to present you will be able to see this note so wherever you think that you you're going to forget some points you can just put in here which you don't want it to explicitly be shown to the audience so which is not going to be on this slide pane but it is going to be on this notes uh, pane right and this bottom is generally your status bar and whenever it is required so here you have these uh, outline tab where you have, you know, if you have n number of slides, so all these slides are going to be seen on this uh, left uh, thing. And whenever uh, any options, any um, you know, formatting is to be done or any other new uh, pop up window is, uh, you know, taken, a task pane that will be open on the right hand side. That is task pane, anything specific to an object that you're using. You know, you, you will have certain options on the right. So, for example, when you have um, generally in few versions, you can see when I click on animations, you will have this on the right hand side task pane. You will have different options that are available in this version. You have it on the top itself. Right. And then you have the uh, scroll bars. Now, how to navigate through or move around this PowerPoint? Uh, we generally, however, you use your the uh, mouse or the mouse pad in your laptop, right? So that is going to be the same. You can just scroll in and at the bottom you can zoom in, zoom out, right? And you have the scroll bar to move. Okay, so all this is possible. And again, the movement of notes pane. So you want to look uh, view the entire slide one slide in one uh, the single view that also can be done right so these options are here and uh, you know that you have the option for slideshow also here right okay so these are the basic uh, outline or what is available here so like you can see in the first thing first menu file you can have open new you have save. So generally, uh, basics of all the applications, you give save as for the first time, right? So I give a name. I just browse where I have to save it, and I'm giving a name so that becomes that uh, PowerPoint presentation. And when you see here, uh, the next is the save command. So when you're already working on this, um, PPT and then you just want to keep saving it often so that whenever the power goes or where, whether there is some other error, error or some uh, something is hanged, the work is still saved. So you keep saving it, right? And then in the file only you have the options for the print, print options also will be in the file. And home is what generally we have. So where you can have uh, create a new slide, uh, Okay, and in insert, you will be able to see to insert uh, tables, to insert the text boxes, different styles of text and everything. And once you type in some text, then you can format it also. Okay, so first thing we'll go to the home. Okay, so on the home button, first we will go for a new slide. So you have, whenever you open a black presentation, you will have first slide and basically that will be the title slide. So if I want to create another slide, I will just have to uh, keep my mouse, the cursor on the outline pane, the left side pane, right? And here I will click and I can click on enter. If I click on enter, I'm going to get another slide, okay? Or here on the home button, I can go to new slide and there are different options, different layouts, how I want this new slide to be, whether I want a title slide again, or whether I want to have something like to add contents. You want some two columns, uh, kind of where you want some comparisons or a picture, and then you just want to de describe something. You can create a, a template as such from here, or you just can, you know, you can just even have a plain blank and then you insert whatever you want. I can just insert 
a shape or I can insert a text box wherever I want. And then I can type in. OK, so that option is there. And wherever I want, I can insert the table or the picture, whatever object that you want to insert in. Right. So the layouts are there. And also the third option. So the first thing is just you click, have it here uh, to keep the cursor and click on enter or you go to home button and go for the new slide. Or also you can just right click on this first and then you go for a new slide or the different options are duplicate. So when I say duplicate, for example, the second slide, I have just a con contents type. Uh, I've already typed some uh, word, right? So I click on the slide, I do right click, and then I do a duplicate slide. So I get two slides with the same content, same words. And when this will be useful, uh, let me open the previous thing. See, so um, for example, I already have this third slide that I want to tell you, right? When I want to create the fourth point that I want to tell you, I will just do this right click and do duplicate slide. Okay. And I can just make it into four so that every time I don't have to copy all these icons and buttons and create uh, this slide uh, background. So whichever template I'm comfortable with, I will just duplicate it and edit whatever I want to, right? So once I edit it, but I want this slide somewhere down, what I have to do, I just have to, in the outline pane itself, I'm clicking on this 18th uh, slide, click and hold, and then I can just drag it where I want to keep it. So only at this point, I want the fourth uh, topic to be started, then I will just drag it here, okay? So this will be the use of uh, the duplicate slide. So whenever you want, you can use the duplicate slide. OK, and here itself, you can choose for the uh, different styles. So in the first slide, it is already a title slide, but I want to change the layout. I can still do it by using here. OK, so all these options are available on a right click or on a, a command prompt, like, you know, some uh, keyboard, keyboard con uh, shortcuts. Or you can go to this home menu and do whatever the uh, different commands that you want to do it. So the first thing that you obviously want to know is once you open a uh, presentation, you need to know how to open a new presentation. You need to know how to save it. So when you save it, the file saves as .pptx in the very latest versions after 2007, it gets saved as .pptx. Earlier uh, PowerPoints would just be .ppt, okay? So like any other software, be it AutoCAD or any application that you have used, when you're using, uh, saving your file, using and saving your file in a very latest version, it can open only in the latest version. When you open it in the earlier version, it will still open. There may be some errors. That error may be like uh, here you would have had some kind of font, font size. The position of that text would have slightly changed in the previous version. So certain uh, features which are additionally available in the latest versions that may not be compatible with the earlier versions. So in that case, you might have some errors. Sometimes some blank pages may uh, have, you know, be opened. Right? So in that case, what do you do before you uh, create and then you want to transfer it to some other system where you know that there wouldn't be the latest version, you go to save as. And here at the bottom, you will have these at save as, you will have these different options, how you want to save the PowerPoint, right? So default, if it is a latest version, it is going to be .pptx, okay? So if it is 97 to 2003 version, it is going to be .ppt, okay? And if you want to share your PPT to someone and you don't want it to get, uh, you don't want it to be editable, that nobody should change the text, okay? Nobody should be able to change anything out of your presentation, then you will convert it into PDF. So it is simply there in Save As itself. So in Save As, we generally give the file name. So below that, we just have to choose in what format it has to be saved. So like any other application, these features are the same, right? So you also, you can have it as a, 
a pdf you can have it as even a gif you know animated image you can have it you can just create as one uh, picture all that is possible and you can also have it as a powerpoint slideshow itself the presentation itself so what will happen is once i click on that file it will automatically go to the slideshow it will not ask us to go to the slideshow separately that also is possible uh, to save the file in that format so whoever opens it okay. directly you can have the slideshow only okay so the basic thing that you want out of this uh, powerpoint presentation is that you want uh, you want to convey things so you want to convey or communicate to the audience uh, using text or pictures charts and everything right so so in today's session we are going to see about the text so here we have this uh, text box so like i said some existing text box will be there if you are choosing a um inbuilt layout or if i have some blank page also i can create a text box so i go to insert i have to go to text box i have to just create a box hold a, uh, you know okay i'll just go slow again insert a text box and click at some corner hold hold it and just drag it and leave it and the text box will be created okay so within this text box, I can just type in whatever I want to. And whenever you choose a theme, right? So when I was telling you themes and templates, one, you have to go to the file. When you open itself, you have to create a template or you have this design. Okay. In design, you can choose the uh, inbuilt templates. Okay. So you can choose in that way. So whenever you choose this design, right? So what happens is you will be able, all you will be, uh, sorry, you will be able to see these color themes. See the same design is there, same pattern, but I can just change the color of the boxes how it has to appear. Similarly, for each of the design, I can also choose what are the, what should be the default font that has to be followed okay so i'm choosing a design like this so in the title slide i have like this and here i have this way okay and in these variants i will go i can choose what color i want whatever shade i want i'm going for this uh, okay something pinkish okay and again i can choose what is the default font that I want it. So again, this font and the font size, mm. it basically depends on the audience and what kind of matter you want to present. You know, the entire theme itself is like that. When it is going to be a very professional uh, uh, report submission, you cannot have uh, too much of decorations on your uh, screen. You cannot have very attractive colors. You know, that wouldn't look good. It has to be very decent and in, you know, like English colors like that, decent colors. And the font also has to be specific to that. So you can choose the default uh, default font here. Okay. And how the effects should be, how, how should be the background styles, all this can be chosen here. All right. So I'm just going with this. Right. So if I had not chosen the text fonts here, Okay, so if I have it as uh, some other font, but in this slide, I want to change it, change the font alone, then what I should do is I have to select the uh, content that I, I want the font to be changed. And in the home button, you can see this font where you can uh, choose the font, right? And you can also see the font size that we have to choose, okay? So these are basics that you can see it in Word or in uh, as well as in PowerPoint, right? So you have these uh, font style and this font uh, size. And you have another option nearby that. So that is instead of, you know, once I have created this 18 size, I just want to fit into like, for example, let's see the text box itself, you know, it's small. So one, I have to drag this corners and make the text box bigger or if i if i'm sure that i want this text box to be the same size and this this word has to come in the same line what i have to do i have to select these word letters this word and then i have to keep trial 
okay i have to make it as 17 and i have to see whether it fits in or like that so instead of keep changing the numbers you can do this where it just you know decreases automatically i mean instead of typing the numbers it just decreases or increases the font size and you can see what fits in best okay now for the same text box if you want the border or some other uh, shape or within this rectangle alone if you want a background then what you do is you go to the shape format in shape format you have different word styles again inbuilt word styles when where you can use that okay so for these word styles you can choose what should be the text fill so wherever it is fill means inside it is painted right so that is can be done or the text outline you can choose what it has to be okay same thing you can go there and you can choose the weight weight is going to be the thickness of the border or the thickness of the font right that can be used you can also choose how you want that border to be the border to be full thick line dash lines all this we are talking about the text outline you know the border of the text the outer portion of the c you can decide what color you want uh, in what uh, thickness you want and in what shape you want okay and if you don't want any outline then you go for this no outline right so this is the text editing so these are just additionals because uh, whenever you go for you know uh, in word we will generally go just use these options mostly where you just want to use the differentiate the font color directly from here we will do it right font color will be changed font size and font type will be changed but in presentations a uh, powerpoint presentation wherever you want it catchy or wherever you want to showcase it in a different way in that case we go for this shape format and you can go for these uh, different word styles and for the box that i was telling you again in this drop down arrow if you click on it you can have different options you know for the, that button alone you can have it in a different color different border again you can choose the inbuilt options that are available or here you have the same thing here it was for text to fill text inside what you want text outside you want what you want and uh, similarly here you have within the shape what i want so within the shape i want some blue color outside the shape what should be the border color that i want okay same thing in the outline i can go find what is the thickness of the border i want Okay, if any other image is to be pasted in. So all these uh, different formattings can be done here. Okay, so the basic, just the text formatting, if you want to do, it is going to be only here. So you have font uh, type, font size, increase or decrease the font size. Okay, and... I can do this bold. Uh, I'm sure all of us are aware of this, these basic formatting. Okay, so bold. And you can see the keyboard shortcut also with along with that. So if it is bold, you can just click on control and capital B. That will be bold. I is going to be italics, little slanting uh, font. That is control plus I. U, control plus U is underline. You just want to underline that word okay and this is just uh the shadow if you want to create a shadow if it is going to be a bigger size okay you can see some kind of shadow is there and i will just show you without the shadow okay and this is without the shadow okay so this thing can be done so whatever formatting you do you need to select those letters or select the entire word or the entire sentence for which you want to do the formatting. So you choose everything and you do the formatting here. And this is just to strike through, strike through the entire word. Okay. And you can also decide on how these content, uh, you know, you can see the spacing between the two letters. Okay. At some point, I just wanted, you know, little... Uh, Mari dragged or whether where you want more spacing horizontally then i have to use this or this is what normally it looks like so this calibri type font normally this is how it will look if i want to do anything you know if i want it to be very uh, sticking to each other in that case i have to use things and i can also go for more spacing where you can customize 
how you want these to be uh, put together. All right. So here you have the, okay. So again, I'm choosing the content and this here you can see if I click on uppercase, all the letters that I have typed will turn into uppercase. And if it is capitalize each word, so I just write a sentence. I'm just typing it, selecting all these uh, words. When I do it as lowercase, all the letters have become lowercase. Capitalize each word. So each word beginning alone we, we will be, have a capital letter. All right. And toggle case will be whatever I've typed in small will become uh, capital letters and whatever I've typed in capital letters will become small letters. OK, so generally uh, another shortcut, generally what we should know while typing uh, when your caps lock is on or off, when you want to toggle to another one, that is I'm uh, typing capital C right with the caps lock on. And now the next letter, when I, if I want it as a small letter, one thing I have to switch off the caps lock and then uh, type O, or I can just press Shift plus O. So whenever whenever I type Shift plus O, then it will become a smaller letter. Okay. So vice versa, when I have caps lock off, the first letter, if you see, it, it's going to be C, small C. And now when I type with Shift plus O, then that is going to be a capital letter. Okay. So instead of using caps lock on and off, you can also this use this shift button to uh, toggle between small letters and uh, capital letters. Okay. So these are the basic uh, formatting here you require. And then this is the font color. Okay. And you can go for these standard colors. See, in these theme colors, this is because we have already chosen as the theme. We have only these combinations available here. And these standard colors are, you know, basic uh, primary colors that we can use. Or we go for more colors and you can choose on what uh, thing you want. And you can also have, you know, based on the primary colors, RGB colors, we have these values. If you know that color font, uh, color value, that also can be used to choose the thing. And this is the highlighting option. If you want to highlight just one or two letters or whatever, you can highlight. Again, the arrow mark next to that highlight, you can choose with what color you want to highlight the text. Okay. So the thing is, for whatever you choose, you have you need to select the um, letters or the words and then do the formatting. Okay. So the next topic that we have to see is so now under the table of contents. When I, you know, whatever I've typed and I've clicked on enter. And when I type, it will have the same formatting as my previous sentence. Okay, so I have to clear all this, select this. I have to clear these formattings. Or if I want this heading to be a separate one and bottom, I can create another text box for the content itself, I will create another uh, text box. Okay. Now, like I said, the presentations, PowerPoint presentation shouldn't be completely like a document, written document. It cannot have the entire uh, written content in the PowerPoint. So it will be more of paragraphs and it will be very difficult for the presenter to look at it and read, I mean, uh, you know, to explain things and it'll look very awkward for the audience to look into this presentation if it is just paragraph. For that, we can just open a document and we can just show them, right? So, basic idea is you're going to create bullets or keywords from which you can easily uh, tell your ideas and explain it orally. And you can have pictures which will uh, represent visual. You can, you know, visually. Uh, Communicate. So uh, I can just have see the first text box, then introduction. Then I say why or what, whatever. You know, I can have it as just single word, or I can just have it as a bullet point. So uh, like in this presentation, previous presentation I had, so about Microsoft or Microsoft, and I had keywords as saying that. 
it is a uh, it produces these uh, softwares and windows application and all that right so it didn't have the complete sentence it was not like microsoft produces so and so comma so and so and full stop it it wasn't a full sentence it was just keywords it just said windows it just said microsoft teams so that was just the keyword with which uh, i'll be able to uh, convey the points orally also right or with the narration that you have for the presentation so when i just type and uh, just uh, click enter and just do this it is not that neat so in certain cases like when you want to list things list the items you use the bulletings right so you use uh, bullets or you use the numbering for that so this is the bullets command i click on the bullets and these bullets are created okay so obviously this is the default bullet type this black circle uh, okay when i click on the arrow mark next to the bullets i can go for different designs okay so different designs whatever you want to have it you can click on it also under that you can go for this bulleted if you don't want these default pictures or the inbuilt ones you can uh, choose a different color for the bullets okay you can also customize it you can add in some other pictures or whatever what is available online instead of these dots or these symbols you can choose that and then select it okay so this is one option how what else you have to do to make your presentation neat using these bullets so to make it simple we'll just have this these type of bullets okay sometimes we will we want to have some subdivisions under this okay so under introduction i want to split in what all i'm going to describe so in that case i cannot have these objectives also under the same bullet you know on the same level so what i'm supposed to do is after the introduction i'm clicking on enter and then i click a tab okay i press on tab one bullet you know one tab is gone inside and then i have this objectives okay so it is very clear that this you can at any time you can just click on this border and move the text box also okay so you can see this text box introduction why what is in one stage and this objective and outcome is the uh, subheading under introduction it is obviously seen because we have this one tab space you can also click on these alone and have a different bullet design so that it is even more obvious okay uh the next option that you have to know is generally on the top go to view go to view and tick on this ruler okay view and you just have to tick on the ruler once you tick on the ruler you will be able to see this scale right this ruler or the scale which is on the top and on the sides okay so when this will be useful is now i have this text see if i want this uh, these contents okay this text box i want this thing to be seen on left hand side one thing is i just click on this uh, uh, text box completely click on the border when i have this plus like symbol arrows on all the four sides i can just click on the uh, text box and just move it using the mouse click hold and just move wherever i want okay or if it is just clicked i can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move exactly where i want it okay and if there is going to be a very big sentence like i previously said i can move you know just drag this text box so that to fit in the entire sentence or if i want to have a picture or something on the right hand side then the text box is restricted at this point only right so accordingly i can do that changes also 
And if I want you know, to reduce the space between this bullet, this circle, and the text, or if I want to increase the distance between this point and this text, the first letter, what I should do is I have to select the text. OK, select the text. On the ruler, you will be able to see these two. two uh, triangle shapes okay so you just have to slide in this uh, button you can move the bottom triangle and the bottom triangle both will move together okay so if you click on the rectangle and just try to move the up upper and the bottom triangle will move at same time so which means the spacing between the dot and the letter is not being changed, but the entire with along with the bullet, the text and the bullet is just moving wherever you wherever you're dragging. OK, in case I just want to change the spacing of this, I need to move the upper triangle alone. OK, so the upper triangle alone, you have to click drag and move it around. The spacing will be moved in so i'm if i click on the bottom rectangle and move it is going to be the entire movement if i move the upper triangle alone i can just change the spacing between this bullet and the text okay yeah so for any doubts so we have just seen uh, the basics of text how to add a text box text box how to do basic formatting of the text uh, how to add bullets and how you can change the bullet uh, design or the bullet spacing. The same thing, you can just click on and do the number uh, bulleting also. You can choose what type of numbers, Arabic, Roman letters, and how it should be. You can do it. Okay. Any doubts so far? OK, so this ruler option is also very uh, useful and comfortable to work on. And the basic thing, when you do a documentation uh, and we choose an A4 size, you know, normal A4 size paper and we have to do it, we can go from uh, font size 12 to 14. That will be decent enough when you take printout or even in, on, on screen it is going to be that size will be good. But when it is a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, uh, when I click on the, I can just show you. For a word, this will be good. But for here, I'm just putting as 14 font size. And let me go to slideshow. You can see this is actually small. You know, you do a presentation in a conference hall or somewhere where the, your audience is going to be really far behind also. In that case, this is going to be very small. So beginning from 20, you know, 18 to 40, 1A to 40, this will be a very good uh, size. So depending upon uh, the content of the page, we can just have it. OK, this is kind of decent enough. Uh, it look neat. Okay, so if you can see the heading, which was good, is 44 size, actually. And these contents are uh, 24. Okay? So basic, at least 18 to 30, that range should be good. 20 plus is a good range for the font size. Okay, And uh, one more thing I want to tell you, like in the previous session, when I was asking you, um, difference between the Google applications for the documentation spreadsheets and the Microsoft thing. So one of the answer was saying that uh, it can be worked on simultaneously. Right. So here in Microsoft also, this is actually possible to work on on a same document uh, together. The thing is, like I already uh, told you, Microsoft itself is a licensed version. You need to uh, purchase a license one and you have to install and use it. And in that, there are different variants. So if you buy this Office Suite or Office 365 that comes now, there you have this collaborate option itself where you can share your document. Okay. Uh, here I suppose. 
so like you see here you have share and you can do put in put this in the one drive so that is again a cloud storage where like your google drive it is going to be there in that drive and anybody can use it uh, edit it at the same time okay so that collaboration is also possible that i want to tell you and now the last topic for this session is the do's and don'ts so for now you know the basics of this uh, presentation in the next class next few classes we will see how to add on the tables pictures how to do all that formattings uh, shape formatting etc so in general presentation i want you people to uh, Yes, I've just stopped sharing my screen. I want you to put in the chat box or unmute and tell me uh, what should be the do's and don'ts. You just have to type saying that this is allowed and this is not allowed in the presentation. To start with, I would say, uh, like I was telling you, you cannot have entire paragraph just copy pasted there, right? Complete paragraph wouldn't look good. So like that, I want you to type in what would be the do's and don'ts in a presentation slide. Uh, please unmute and tell or you can just type in in the chat box. do's and don'ts in a presentation slide so for now at least okay let us start with the uh, at least in chat box i want you all to interact content in bulletins good very good so no paragraphs as such right even when it is in bulletin, it does. It can be in sentences. Okay, when I had put bullets, it, it I didn't put it as a sentence. I just gave keywords that it is a MNC company. It is from uh, you know just America, and just this Xbox like that. I just given bulleted keywords. Instead of that, you can have sentences also, but the sentence cannot be you know very long. Seven words in a sentence that is a decent enough for a presentation you cannot just have a very long sentence as a bullet then there is no meaning in having a uh, bullet okay so generally we will restrict like five lines this is general five to six lines in a presentation will look neat and the font size like i was saying 20 plus so font size 20 plus will be again some kind of decent and for the heading you can go even up to 40. what are the do's and don'ts you let uh, think so main thing is whenever you have text this font size is uh, uh, important avoid short forms okay yeah avoid short forms is uh, like the first time when i introduce it maybe i can uh, tell it is like you know i type it as full google classroom and in the bracket i have to put it as gcr and the next time when i use it i can just use it as gcr okay but otherwise uh yeah maximum you need to avoid short short uh, short forms the abbreviations now see this font itself, whatever options we saw, right? Everything is important in do's and don'ts. So font size we have seen, right? 20 plus. Even the font style is important. So when I am doing a project presentation for a Viva, I cannot have everything in italics or cursive handwriting type of font, right? If it is some other presentation where I'm trying to uh, show my creativity, some presentation about my art, about my hobbies, in that, uh, in such presentations, I can go for italics, cursives, or any other different types of uh, fonts, right? 
and if it is going to be uh, something related to the theme and so you have different fonts which look like uh, the hindi uh, like this hindi language english fonts will be you know in different style so if if it is required for that kind of uh, um, audience or if that is required in that particular situation in that case alone we have to use okay so you know to open a powerpoint presentation you can start with a new presentation you can uh, uh, or choose templates you will be able to add slides you will be able to navigate or uh, scroll zoom in zoom out you can use all the options that are available in the powerpoint right you will be able to save the file in different formats as a powerpoint or as a pdf or as well as a image or a slideshow itself right you know how to add a slide how to add a text box how to format the text things okay and then the use of the ruler and how you do the bulleting whether it is the design bull designed ones or the number bulleting okay and you know that there is an option for collaborate or sharing it or taking it to live so what the advantage of taking it to one drive or uh, sharing the project on cloud storage would be basic thing is that at home i have a desktop or a laptop where i'm using i'm saving this file okay and i don't want to carry this laptop or i won't be able to carry the desktop to a uh, college or to my office so in that case here i save it uh, in my cloud storage and wherever i go there whichever device is available i can just open it online through my account details right so that is uh, easy it is not necessary that every time you have to carry your uh, system or uh, in that case even for a pen drive the thing is you require a proper uh, uh, network connection so that you will be able easily able to access it okay so we'll have 5 minutes for discussion now any questions anything else that you want to see in this text formatting yes anything else you want to uh, ask about that in text you have a lot of formatting options which you will be going through in uh, ms word itself so like i said word and because everything is the application uh, type from the microsoft uh, all these formatting options are going to be similar only right but the mostly what we are trying to use here uh, for the aim of presentation these bullets are very much required and like i said you go for these different word styles under shape format you have different word styles to go for different word arts okay so uh, you can create shadows for that you can have these uh, transparent letters okay if you want the uh, words behind some kind of image so then you want to make it some transparent you have some glow effect so all these uh, different ways of presenting these uh, uh, no additional formatting alone i have just covered here because the basic formatting is the same as what you will be looking in your ms word also okay the spacing we have seen this horizontal spacing you can also do the vertical spacing so between two sentences how much spacing is required that you can choose i can also choose the test direction okay so i want this text to be in this direction inverted or whatever it is in the vertical uh, stacking position all that can be done okay so any questions
Okay, if there are no questions, we'll stop with this session. And I have just a few instructions.